Welcome to church once again. It's a beautiful Sunday. Tell the person next to you, welcome once again. Welcome. Let us be cheerful. Tell somebody next to you. Greet everybody around you and say, welcome to church once again. Let's begin to wave our hands to God. Let's thank him for another beautiful day. Thank him for his presence once again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for having me. your presence once again. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord bless you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I am in your presence again. Have mercy. Take all the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are praying. Thank him for the week. I want you to thank him wholeheartedly. Thank him for the past week. Thank him for the week to come. Thank him for all that he has done and that which he has not done. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My Father, my God, Lord Jesus, I appreciate you, Lord Jesus, for the past week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for proving yourself, oh God, in my life. Thank you for the week I had. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I appreciate you. The word of the Lord says, magnify the Lord. Exalt his holy name. Thank him in all ramifications. Thank you. Lord, we appreciate you. We are thankful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we appreciate you. Let our thanks be given accepted, O God, in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Let us tell God, Lord, I am in your presence once again. Lord, I have come unto you, O God. Cleanse me of all my sins. Cleanse me. Purify me. Let my service be acceptable unto thy side. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My Father and my God, I am in your presence once again. Help me, O oh God, not to pray amiss. Let my thanksgiving be accepted unto you. Let it be acceptable, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me not to come in vain. Open your mouth and tell God you are in his presence. Let not your coming be in vain. In the name of Jesus, myself and my family, I in your presence, oh God. Let our thanksgiving, let our worship, let our service be acceptable to thee, oh God. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let us tell God once again to prove himself mightily. Today, we want to, oh God, to prove yourself mightily. The works of your hands, oh God, we want to honor. The works of your hands, oh God, we want to experience. In a different way, in a different manner, open your mouth and begin to pray. Remember when you ask, it shall be granted. Say it to your father. My father and my God, I ask, oh God, that you prove yourself today. Prove yourself mightily. In our midst, oh God, today, in the name of Jesus, purify us. Grant us, oh God, worship, worthy of your service, in the name of Jesus. Grant unto us answered prayers. Remember, once your prayers are answered, nobody, nobody can hinder them. Tell it to Abba Father to answer your request, to grant your request. So grant your prayers. Tell him that to him alone, we want to give all the glory. Thank you for answered prayers. For in Jesus' precious name we are praying. I want us to tell God, upon this ministry of God, we want you to perform wonders. Upon this ministry, we want to declare freedom healing, salvation, miracles on all sides, upon everyone that connects to this ministry. We want, oh God, the renewal of power. Let it be unto us, oh God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Our Father and our God, upon 
Mount Zion you said, oh God. Upon his ministry, we ask that you not prove yourself. Everyone who connects to this ministry, both online and offline, everyone who believes in this ministry, we ask, oh God, that you prove yourself mightily in our midst. We prove yourself, you prove yourself. Prove yourself, oh God, through this ministry. Let the works of your hands, oh God, be heard. Let it be seen, oh God, through this ministry. In the name of Jesus, remember, you are the ministry. Remember, you are the church. The church of God. Receive power. Receive renewal of strength. Receive power. Receive prayers. Receive answers. Receive healing. Receive connection on all sides. The ministry of the Lord Jesus. Let it be proven upon this mountain. We ask that our prayers be answered, O oh God. For Jesus, precious name we are praying. Amen. Tell God to speak to you personally. I have come unto you, O oh God, this day. Speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. Prove yourself in my life. Talk to me. That which you desire, say it unto the Lord. As I always say, never you come to the presence of the Lord empty handed. Come with expectations. Pour them out to God. Tell him, oh God, this actual thing I want you to mention, oh God, today. Prove it. Let there be a solution. Open your heart and begin to pray. My Father, my God, have a Father. Prove yourself mightily in my life, in our midst. Oh Lord, do that which no one can do. In the name of Jesus, the God of the universe. Specifically, tell God what you want. Specifically, tell Him. Pour out your heart to Him. He shall grant our request. I know it. I feel it. I know it. I feel it. I know it. I feel it. The God of all His armies. And He will not leave us alone. We shall not go back home empty handed. We shall not go back home in vain. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for our sad prayers. For Jesus. Mighty name we are praying. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord. And I know that today he shall grant our request in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for those that are here to come. Not everyone who is willing, but there's no strength to come down onto this mountain, to come and mark their presence in your presence, oh God. Lord, esteem their faith. Grant them strength from within. Grant them strength physically. Extend your feet, oh God, that they shall be partakers of today's blessings. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My Father, my God, in togetherness we pray. Everyone who is here to come, everyone who is supposed to step their feet upon this mountain, everyone who is supposed to connect, we ask, oh God, extend their feet. Let their hearts yearn for you. Let their spirit. Let that spirit long for you. Let them test for you. Let that test for you, God, increase in them. Esteem their faith. Grant unto them strength in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are praying. I pray as you have prayed for everyone on this mountain. As you have stood in gap for everyone who is here to come, the Lord God Almighty will start his blessings from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Upon your life, the Lord Jesus will prove himself in the name of Amen. Jesus. Then thank him for the success of today's service. Lord, we appreciate you for the success of today's service. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. For it shall be a success. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you. Lord, we appreciate you for the manifestation of your power. Thank you for proving yourself. Thank you for you shall heal the sea, for you shall heal our land. Thank you for this ministry shall receive renewal of strength. 
thank you, thank you. For as I go on gladdened, for as I go on multiplied, for as I go on blessed, for as I go on increased on all sides. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my family is blessed. For upon this mountain, you, Lord, have poured out your blessings. Thank you. Upon our leaders, we ask, oh God, that you, Lord, bless them. That you, Lord, multiply them. That you, Lord, grant unto them, oh God, your word from above. That they shall feed us, oh God. We, your shepherds, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answer prayers. Do you feel the presence of the Lord? Clap your hands for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And most especially, it is amazing and act warming to feel the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us turn to our neighbor and say, I'm so glad to see you here today. I'm so glad to see you here today. The glory of the Lord is shining in your life. Amen. You are not saying it. Say that to your neighbor now. I can see the glory of the Lord shining in your life. I can see the glory of God shining in your life. I can see the goodness of God all around you. I can see the goodness of God all around you. You are marvelously helped by God. You are loved by God. And we love you. Are you saying that to your neighbor? Sister Dokas, who did you say yours to? Yeah, you say sister sister Yemi. Sister Yemi, are you are you sure you're huh? Amen. Praise God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Today's Sunday school we shall be looking at God is a balanced being. God is a balanced being. And if you notice, for the past two Sundays now we've been speaking about God the Father. And because God is the Father. But before we go into the study of today, let us bow our hearts in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we submit our spirit, our soul. We submit them to you, Lord. And we pray that you will teach us yourself today in Jesus' name. We pray that every word that shall proceed, Lord, out into the atmosphere of this room, Lord, it shall fall on a fertile ground in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Father, we we'll pray that these words, Lord, as, as much as they are seed, Lord, it shall be watered, Lord, by our actions. And we shall reap the fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall not just eat the fruit, Lord, but we shall be blessings to many others in the mighty name of Jesus. May we not just be the hearers of the word, but may we be the doers of the word. In the mighty name of Jesus, I submit myself to your will, Lord, that I shall speak, Lord. I shall not just speak to your people, Lord, but I shall speak also to myself. In the name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my God and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Because I hold firmly the word of the Lord that says that in the presence of God there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand side there are pleasures evermore. As much as we come, we gather together to be in God's presence. We also are harvesting divine blessings. Amen. Amen. Is somebody excited about that? Yes. Hallelujah. So we spoke about God is a balanced God. God is a balanced God. God is holy, loving, merciful, faithful, yet he is just and righteous. Amen. Many people today have a lopsided view of God. Because of the children here well thinking what's lopsided, it means that with one side lower or smaller than the other. So which means that God is not lower in any part in any areas or too high in any area. 
Amen. Some overemphasize his love and forget that it is just and only at the same time. People always go for the blessings of God, the riches of God. And some will even say, I can only, you know, the only aspect of God that I just want to focus on is just his love. Amen. Praise God. But what I want to tell you this morning is if you have a broken concept of God, you will not be able to enter into the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I hope we're able to catch that. Hallelujah. Amen. Many people today have that view or that mentality of if God is good, why did my father die? If God is good, why am I sick? If God is good, how come I don't have food in my house? If God is good, how come everything is not just smooth? Amen. Amen. But one thing that we need to ask ourselves is, when Jesus Christ came in the form of man, did he have it smooth? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The love of God allows God to forgive our sins and also show us mercy. And who can God show mercy? The sinner, a repentant sinner. Amen. That is why we come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Hallelujah. I hope we are following. The holiness and justice of God demand that sin must be punished to the full extent of the law. According to the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23, which we all quote every time, saying that for the wages of sin is death. However, that is not a completion. It continues, if we turn our Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23, let us quickly have a look and see what God is telling us. Let's read that together. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Thank you, ma. Mm -hmm. Mm. Amen. Thank you so much, my God bless you. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God. What is the free gift of God? Salvation is the free gift of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So which means that is remarkable, overwhelming gift of grace to believers is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. There is a law. With God, there is a law. Or let me say there is a rule. There are principles. If you look at many passages of the scripture that we'll be looking at today, you'll be able to see that it is, if you do this, you will get this. Amen. Amen. God is a balanced God. If you obey, you will eat the good fruit of the land. But many people want to eat the good fruit of the land without obeying. Hallelujah. Praise God. We forgot that God is a just God. If God were a mere human being, he would be completely frustrated with incompatible emotions and desires with the two sides in constant conflict. What does that mean? Have you ever had two people that you love so much? But there is one that it can show you so much affection and the other person may be highly reserved and you think that the one that is showing you affection is the one that loves you the most. So you increase your love to that person and the one that is highly reserved, you just, you just be with that person. But you're just like, maybe this person doesn't really like me, there's no point. Amen, that is human. But with God, God understands our personality. God understand how David could come before him and roll on the floor and play his arm and play all his instruments to praise him. And also how Elijah could go before God and rain down fire. Amen. Amen. God is a balanced God. He does not look at our inefficiencies or inadequacy. But he remains God. He is just and he is righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. 
To argue that hell is impossible for a loving, merciful God could not send a helpless human being there forever and ever is an unbalanced view of God. It is an unbalanced view of God for you to think that why would God create hell when we already know that in that book of Revelation where there was a rift or a fight in heaven and then the enemy was sent to earth. Do we think that the enemy will not be punished for his, his work? Amen. Amen. Our God is a just God. If God wants us to live a righteous life, if our God is not a balanced God, he would have thought, you know what, I think let's just eradicate everything. Let everybody be killing themselves. Whoever has the power to survive, just survive. And at the end of the day, I'll come back and take whoever that is available. But he didn't think about that. His love supersedes that. When he chose to give Jesus Christ and say, whoever, whoever, that is anyone that could come through Jesus Christ will be saved from the captivity of the enemy. Because the enemy has an agenda. And daily, he's working on his agenda to see how he can gather more people. But here, God is saying, if you can be saved and be under the umbrella of salvation and obey, you will be kept. Nothing will be missing, nothing will be broken. Hallelujah. Amen. To understand the horrors and hells and the blackouts at Calvary, meditate much of the holiness and sovereignty of God's wrath against sin. That is according to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. If you can read that, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Therefore, since we know the fear of the Lord and understand the importance of obedience and worship, we persuade people to be reconciled to him. But we are plainly known to God. He knows everything about us. And I hope that we are plainly known also in your conscience, your God-given discernment. What is this place telling us? God loves you. God loves you. But in as much that God loves you, it is possible that you choose the driver of your life. Amen. Amen. God gave us that option. Gave us that, that free hand. To make our choice. Do we want to follow God? Or do we want to follow the enemy? There's no there's no way that you can be in between. Amen. Amen. Somebody has to be the driver of your life. It could either be the enemy. Or it could be God. Hallelujah. Amen. When we choose that God would be the driver of our lives. We know that our destination is sure. But when we allow the enemy to be the driver of our life, even though God loves us, God will not do anything because we already made our choice. But his love yet is intact. When we turn back as a prodigal son and come back to God, because he's a balanced God, he's already told you that if you come back, I will receive you. No matter how long you have, you, you've left, when you come back to him, he's still open up to receive you back. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. His word is yea and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the greatest marvels of our age is that God found a way of salvation that satisfied both the holiness of God and the love of God. This solution also satisfied the law, yet left man a creature with a free will who could choose salvation or damnation, heaven or hell? We have that choice to choose which way. But whatever our choice is, there is already a law for whatever our decision is. If we choose God, we would have life. If we choose hell, we will have damnation. That has nothing to do with God. Amen. Amen. It is the result of our choice. 
The first part that we're going to look at this morning is God is holy. God is holy. We cannot imagine a God who could be anything but perfect holiness. To be holy means to be free from all defilement, to be pure. God is absolutely pure. Amen. Amen. Who also believes that God is, pure? God is pure? Can we find any iniquity in God? No. Can we find any inconsistency in God? No. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13 says that thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and canst not look on iniquity. God turned from his own son dying on Calvary. Amen. God turned on his own son on Calvary. Why? Because he was carrying the iniquity of the world on his shoulder. If God could turn away from his son at that time that he was carrying the weight of our sins, then what how do we even think that we can escape it and say, you know what, I will just continue in sin and I will say grace will abound. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, in as much as God loves you, God will not love that sin in your hands. God has no problem with you at all, but he has a lot of problem with that iniquity that you are constantly going back into. In that addiction that you will not allow him to help you with. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 15 verse 11 says, Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, walking wonders. Hallelujah. Amen. Have we ever noticed somebody who is righteous? Okay, let's use Job as an example. Job as an example. Job in his time was a perfect man. Amen. Let me put it that way. What do I mean? He obeys God. He loves God. He can give God anything. He has everything anybody could ask or anybody could want as at his own time. Because of his obedience and his love for God, God built a wall around him. Amen. Amen. So now, let's just look at Job as somebody who is righteous, for example. Amen. Amen. Now, God built a wall around Job. Look at this. The enemy has been going round in the world, walking to and fro, must have touched the life of different people, you know, don't do a lot of different things to other people. But he was just going, and God called him. <laughs> Uncle, come. Have you seen? <laughs> where, where are you going? <laughs> and he said, I've been going to and fro. Okay. Remember that the word of God told us that the enemy is like a roaring lion looking for whom to devour, isn't it? So that, that Bible verse also complements that, that it's been going around. Now, his answer to God will marvel you because when God was saying, okay, have you seen my son Job? And his response was, but you have built a wall around him. That is the life of a righteous. The life of a righteous is surrounded with the host of heaven. When we are right with God, the enemy will not be able to, there is no edge that is broken. We are all fenced. And that is when you will be able to say, he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Because now you are living under the shadow of the Almighty. The enemy cannot do anything to you. Now, this is the tricky part. The moment where we sin, we break that edge and we make ourselves liable or prone to, to attack. Amen. Amen. 
then we are prone to attack. The enemy can then come and say, yeah, you've just given me a pathway to come in now. But now, look at that. That is Job. But now we're talking about the almighty God. The holy one. The enemy has nothing against God. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's holy. If he cannot do anything to Job, a man like you and I, that could do something wrong, how much more? God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 First Peter chapter 1 verse 15 and verse 16 says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That means that as a child of God, we can actually live a holy life like our father. The more we walk with God, the more we look like him. Amen. The more we are transformed into his image. Praise God. God is holy. God is sin. His holy wrath must punish sin. That is the lay down rules. The wages of sin is death. Amen. Amen. Which is the explanation of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6. God's love to sinners will never be appreciated until sin in the light of his blazing wrath against sin. The holiness of God demanded punishment for sin. This demand was voluntarily assumed by the Savior on the cross and completely satisfied the Father. If you are of God, then you will be holy. If you are of God, you will be holy. Our God is a holy God. There's no way that we will say that we belong to God. And iniquity would have a mansion in our lives. Amen. Amen. It is a dangerous thing for us to believe that we are children of God and God does not even recognize us. Or our name is not even written anywhere in his book. On the last day, many would say, but in your name I cast out demon. Which is why we should even be, you know, we should give reverence to God. You know, the gift of God is without repentance. If God has already given you the gift of healing, prophecy, no problem, keep prophesying. Keep healing. Keep doing whatever you want to do in his name. He will answer you. Amen. Amen. However, on the last day, all those things are a waste, are gone to a waste. If we are not living a holy life, Like he is. Amen. Amen. The second one is that God is love. Remember the first one. Our God is holy. And now we're talking about our God is love. The, the popular verse, uh, the popular first John chapter 4 verse 8. That is talking about he that loveth not. Knoweth not God. For God is love. If you know anything, or if you don't know anything, it is important that you know that God is love. Amen. Amen. And that is why the book of John 3.16 will say to us that, For God so loved the world, the world that was in sin, and yet he chose to give his only begotten son. Why? Because he was making a way so that we can be reconciled back to him. He is a just God. He is a lovable father. If he's not a lovable father, he would have left everybody.
to die by man's hand or die in iniquities or in the bondage of sin terrorized by the enemy but because he is a God full of love he gave us his son when we are talking about God's love we are not talking about only a verb we all know what a verb is isn't it verb is an action word or a doing word amen in action that's not just it alone God is also in a now we know that as well now is the name of any person animal place or thing isn't it he is present he is in action he is in the doing he is in the moving he is in the present he is in the past he is still in the future amen, amen. his love never changed his love is not just in how much you can do or how much you can give me or how much you can love me it is in the now whether you like it or not I love you that is the love of God whether you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong my love is still intact for you because you didn't do anything to merit that love it is just who I am. Amen. Love is who God is. If God lives in my heart by conversion, then I must love, for I am indwelt by love. That is powerful. If when you gave or when you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you accepted based on love, then because he lives in you, because there's an opening, there's an acceptance, you've allowed Jesus Christ in you, then love is in you. The more you walk with the Holy Spirit, the more the Holy Spirit will help you express that love. It does not matter if you've not been shown love before, or if you don't even know what love looks like. But because you've accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you this is how to show love to people. Yes, this person is bad, but still you can do this to this person. You can help this person. You can forgive this person. You can let it go. Why? Because love is in you. Amen. Amen. 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Amen. Amen. If we claim that we are children of God, we are Christians, but we do not have love, then we have nothing. Amen. Amen. We have nothing. If we cannot forgive, if we cannot make excuses for people, or for things we jump into conclusions. We think about things in our head, form a direction for those things, and then act by those things. That is not love. When we have love, even when people have offended you, you can go to them and say, brother, you did so, 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 and so yesterday. Did you know that? I don't, I'm not happy with that. And then that person can give you the version of his story. Half the time is never what we thought. Amen. It's never what we thought. But it is because the enemy loves to dine and dwell in, 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 in disagreement. So the enemy will make us see the bad part of that situation rather than the good part or the motives behind them. Love is a desire for and delight in the welfare of the one on whom the love is bestowed. True love even loves sinners and enemies. Amen. True love loves sinners and, en and, and, and the enemies. What will you gain to love somebody that loves you? What's your gain? But it is of task when you love somebody that hates you. 
Somebody that doesn't even want to see you. Somebody that when they see you, you can see their face and know that they hate you. But you are still moving close to them and you are still showing them love. That is love. That is you in love. You don't hate people because they hate you. Or love them because they love you. You spread your love everywhere. And by so doing, your own love will supersede their hatred. And even help you live in freedom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 to 7. I want us to write that down and read it at home because of our time. God, as a loving father, manifests his love to the Christians by chastening. Many people will say, if God so loved the world, then why is everything happening the way it's happening? Or why, in the life of a believer, will we see different kinds of things, maybe sickness, or financial in, 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 in instability. Amen. Amen. But the truth is, if our life is not a testimony, then whose life would? To have a testimony means that you've gone through a particular test and you've passed that test. And then you can testify about that test. But if you're saying, God, I don't want anything bad to happen to me. Oh, I don't want anything bad to happen to me. Father, no way. Then you are stopping God to reveal himself through you. But when God allows those things to happen to you, it is because there is room for expansion. We also know that our God is just to the point that he will not give us a test that is beyond our capacity or one we cannot overcome. So whenever those situations come into our life, the, 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 the response to that shouldn't be, Oh, why me, God? God hates me so much. I'm sure there is no God anywhere. That is not the response of a believer. The response of a believer should be God. What is the way now? Where are we going? How do we ride through this storm? I know it's difficult. But in that way, the first thing that you've been able to eradicate if you do that is you've been able to silence fear. Fear that leads to depression because you know that, aha, uh -huh, God, this is another way. Or how you can show yourself strong. Or prove who you are. That you are the powerful God. Because you will not leave me hanging. The next one is our God is a faithful God. God is faithful. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. God is faithful by whom we are called unto fellowship. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God is God, the faithful God. Amen. Amen. What does faithful mean? It means someone who can be safely trusted, who is reliable and dependable. And we know that our God is faithful, he is honest, he never changes. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why the Bible says that it is not a man that would lie, nor the son of a man that will repent of his word. Why? Because he is ever faithful. When he says he will do, when he promises he will do. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter how long it takes for God to be there, like they were waiting for God to come and raise Lazarus. It took God three days because he knew that Lazarus did not die. He was only sleeping. Hallelujah. And when Christ came into that situation and stepped into that storm, Lazarus rose up. Amen. Amen. It does not matter how long it is. If God is telling you that there is possibility in that situation, then believe it. He is never late. He is never late because God does not use our own time. Time created by man. Hallelujah. God has his own time. And he knows the appropriate time to show up. And he will show up for you. Hallelujah. God's faithfulness is manifested in keeping his promises and fulfilling every word that he has spoken. God is unchangeable, for he never lies nor repents. 
see that word. God's faithfulness is manifested in keeping his promises. So that if he has said it, just stand on that word and know that he will do it. And fulfilling every word that he has spoken. Now, this is also where we miss it. Where we ask God for something and God is saying, wait. God is also speaking on how to make that thing come to manifestation. God would need you to walk, be in partnership with him to walk that thing to you. Amen. But when we pray, we want to sit down and expect a magic. God is not a magician. Hallelujah. He is a miracle working God, not a magician. And with that miracle to happen, if Elijah did not open his mouth and call forth for fire, fire would never have come down from heaven, would it? Action. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able to? Whenever we're going through any situation, we need to remember that our God is faithful. If it says you're coming out of that situation, just trust him. The how, leave the how to God. Amen. Leave the how to God. How am I going to come out of this? That is God's job. Your job should be, God, what is the instruction? What do you want me to do? How do I partner with you on this? How do we work this out? Just follow the instruction. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. Even in your own belief sometimes, it will still show up. Because he has said it. And because he has said it, your own belief will not stop it from happening. Hallelujah. The next one is God is merciful. God is merciful. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Deuteronomy 4, 31 says, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee. Amen. Instead of inflicting pain and death as punishment for sin, the Lord is merciful and gave us many blessings, such as health, comfort, and earthly joy to saved and the lost. Have you ever wondered, the same son, if God is not merciful and decides to say, you know what, this son that is coming out, it is only the believers that will enjoy this son. Who can question it? Amen. Who can question him? But because he is a merciful God. Matthew 5, 45, buttress that. It says, he made his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send that rain on the just and the unjust. Why? Because he is a merciful God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God is sovereign and can choose to heal whom he desires to show his mercy. According to Romans chapter 9, verse 15 to 16. Amen. The mercy of God can be shown on the multitude. That's a lot of people. And his mercy can also be, be shown on an individual. So it does not matter how much a, 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 a group of people are. Or the multitude or the number of persons. Even nations. His mercy endured forever. Hallelujah. Psalms 32 verse 10 says, He that trusted in the Lord, mercy shall come pass him about. Did we see that? He that trusted in the Lord will not just enjoy the sun, not just enjoy the rain, but the mercy of God will encompass this person. Somebody say mercy. mercy. Say mercy. mercy. Hallelujah. When the repentant sinner comes to Jesus for forgiveness, he claims not merit, but throws himself upon the mercy of the Lord. When we are coming to God, we're not just saying, Father, you know what? I'm here. Just have mercy and just walk out. Amen. Amen. With humble heart, we come to the throne of grace. We remember the task collector. 
And the other one who were praying and whose prayer was accepted. Hallelujah. Because it is never by our own doing. Psalms 51 verse 1 says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Because our God is love and he shows his love. I will not repent from his love. But to access this love, because he's a balanced God, we must come for it. Because he has given us free will. He has given us a choice. If you want it, you can have it. Hallelujah. Amen. And the very last one is God is just. God is just. God behaves according to what is right and fair. It is not the judgment of man. Why we judge by looks or judge by evidence of what we can see. Even if the most corrupt person in this room has enough evidence, the righteous will be sent to prison. Hallelujah. Amen. But our God does not look at our faces and the evidence of men that we've been able to, to bring or conjure together. It looks straight into our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us write down Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4 and also Psalms 19 verse 9. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Amen. Our God is just and righteous and will make out just judgment to each individual. And that is why on the last day, we will all stand and will give account of our words. And it's not because God does not already know. Amen. Amen. We will stand and the books will be opened and then the dates will be told. So, 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 and so happened this day. How did you deal with this situation? How did you live your life on earth? Amen. Amen. Isaiah 50, 45, 21 says, There is no God else beside me, a just and a savior. God being just, righteous, and holy must act in a manner that is just, fair, and upright. 1 Samuel 2, 3 says, The Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions were made. Amen. Amen. God judges us by knowledge. By what he has seen us do. The evidence that he has concerning us. The funniest part of it is, even as much as God is keep, keeping record, the enemy is also keeping record. Because Bible records for us that the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. Amen. So there's no hiding place. Whatever we do in secret, we think nobody sees me. I can quickly do this. Know that somebody is seeing you. Hallelujah. Amen. God's nature or character leads him to do what or that which is right at all times. God, as the just one, will be the final judge of all things, according to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 32. In conclusion, how can God be both loving and demand holiness at all times, at the same time? How can he both be merciful and just at the same time? You'll be thinking, yeah, but God is merciful. But how can he be fair? How can he be right? How can he be honest? How can he be righteous? How can he be loving? At least if you love me, you shouldn't beat me. Amen. Or chast chastise me. Let's use the right word. Amen. Amen. If you love me, you should, you should be okay with whatever I do. Hallelujah. Amen. But have you seen a child that their parents have allowed to do whatever they like? Have you seen the result of those children? Amen. Amen. But have you also seen the children which in their home, they were able to balance love, balance discipline. Amen. Where they understand that there are consequences. To every action. When you see those children outside, even without their parents, you can tell that this one is raised by an intentional parent. 
So God is also an intentional father to each and every one of us. Remember that we are studying about God the Father. And now we are saying that God is a balanced God. He is faithful, holy, merciful, loving, just, righteous, merciful. Hallelujah. Amen. And so much more. He's able to bring all these things together and then be our father with all of these qualities. Amen. Amen. I pray that the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are to bow in true worship before this great God because he is a perfect God. And we are also encouraged to allow God live in us and through us so that we can be able to express the character and the nature of our Father through the leading of the Holy Spirit by our character and our actions. Amen. Amen. I pray that the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we bow down our heart and let us pray. Let's say, Father, help me understand you more in all of these dimensions of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. That I can enjoy your fullness in the name of Jesus. That when you chastise me, I will not have that orphan spirit. And think, oh God, why me? But I will embrace that chastening, Lord. Because I know that it will empower me and make me become a better person. When you are loving me, I will be able to embrace your love. When you are being merciful to me. I will not keep beating myself up, but I will accept your mercy and be merciful to myself and to my neighbor in the name of Jesus. That Lord, I know that you are a just and a fair God. You are able to know what is right for me at, at all times. Therefore, I submit to you, Lord. And I say, Father, take the wheel, Lord. While I follow in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us begin to thank the Lord because He has answered our prayers. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I said, let somebody shout glorious hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. How many of you are excited this morning? Because I am excited. If you are excited, say, I am excited. If you are sure, say it boldly. I am excited. Why are you excited? Because I have a father. A father who loves me so much. A father who is merciful. A father who is glorious. A father who is kind. A father who can provide. A father who forgives my sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet as we begin to appreciate God this morning in our worship section. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
written and rejoice in this morning. We exalt you. Because we are the reason I'm holy name with magnify your name. I thank you because you are my strength. I thank you because you are my savior. I thank you because you are my redeemer. We exalt you. And forever you will be my God. And forever you will live in my heart. And forever I will be your son. And forever I will be your daughter. Thank you, God, because your love is unfailing. Your love is unfailing. Your love is unfailing. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Because God is faithful, like we have studied in our Sunday school. God is faithful, God is kind, yes. God is merciful. We are going to pray this morning that God, I want to see you Amen. like before, even more than before Amen. in my life, Lord. I want to see more of you. Let us pray that God, Father, because you are merciful, because you are righteous, because you are just, I want to see more of you in my life. I want to continue to see you daily in my life, oh Lord. I want you, only you, Lord God Almighty. Prayer in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to see you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to see your merciful kindness, Lord, in the kindness of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to see you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to see you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to see you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, we want to see you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to see you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we want to see you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to see you, God. Your mercy, your mercy, your mercy, your God. We want to see you, God. In the name of Jesus, we want to see your mercy. We want to see your faithfulness. We want to see your faithfulness in our lives, O God. In the name of Jesus, we want to see your faithfulness, O God. Your faithfulness, your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus, we want to see your faithfulness, O God. In our lives. Life and in the of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, want to see your faithfulness, more of your God, more of your spirit of God, more of your spirit of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, more of your spirit of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, want to see your God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, want to see more of you in our lives, in our endeavors, in everything we do, God, in the name of Jesus, more of you, God, in the name of Jesus, more of your faithfulness of God, more of your faithfulness of God, more of your faithfulness of God, in our our lives to God, in our name of God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is God. Amen. Please, I want us to pray that prayer very well. I don't know, I have different prayer points. They are listed here. I don't know why I just mentioned that. That is just far, far from what I put down here. Let us pray that God, I want to see more of you. I don't know where that prayer point just came from. What I have in my book this morning is that we, want, we need to see the hand of God in our lives. But God just said, no, let us just pray that God, I want to see more of you. In my academics, in my studies, in my family, in what I'm passing through, I just want to see more of you. Let us pray that God, please, I just need to see you. Let me see in all areas of my life. In any way you want to show me that you are God, Father, let me more see you. Let me see more of you. Go into my future. Father, more of you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I want to see more of you, God. In the life of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to see more of you, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In our church, God. I want to see more of you, God. In the life of our children. I want to see more of you, God. In every of our endeavors, God. I want to see more of you, God. In our relationships, God. I want to see more of you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the life of your children this morning. I want to see more of you. I want to see more of you in the name of Jesus. I want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to see more of you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to see more of you, God, in the name of Jesus. More of you, God, in our lives, God, in the name of our demons. Lord, I want to see more of you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to see more of you in our walk, in our labors, in our doings, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Scripture, Exodus chapter 13, verse 3. 
Exodus 13, verse 3. So Moses said to the people, This is a day to remember forever. The day you left Egypt, the place of your slavery. Today the Lord has brought you out by the power of the mighty hand. Amen. We are going to pray that God, let me see you, let me see your hand. Amen. This prayer is let me see you, let me see your hand. Amen. Let me see more of you, let me see your hand, O oh Lord. But I touch you with your heavenly hand, O oh Lord. Lord, want to see more of you. Lord, want to see more of you in the name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see your ways, your works of God, your deeds of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the name of Jesus. Father, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, more of you, God, in our lives, God, in our endeavors, God, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you, God, in our lives, in our church, God, in our lives, in our church, God. Want to see more of you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, want to see more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Want to see more of you, God. In everything we yes, do, God, in, in our Jesus church, in our life, we go. We are Amen. Amen. God Almighty, let your name, let it work wonders for me. Amen. Let your name be beautiful in my life. Come, God, let your name speak to that name. 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 All these prayers, when they are not among the prayers of this name. God, if it is a dynamite by the end, pick it and pray and hold on to that name. El Shaddai, pick it and hold on to it. It means Almighty God. We have a thing this month, it is Hello Him. Hold on to that name. Name of God, the L L Y O R, God, the God Almighty, let it begin to work for me, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, in every aspect of my life, in the name of Jesus, let Your name work for me. Let Your name stand for me. Let Your name stand with me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let Your name work for me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let Your name stand for me. Let it work for me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it work for me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it change situations. Let it change situations. Let it change circumstances. Let it change circumstances. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are the God Almighty. You are the God Almighty. In the name of Jesus. Let your name begin to bring miracles. Let it begin to bring victories. Let it begin to work wonders. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name provide to God. Let your name provide to God. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let us pray that God, where I have finished, let me begin to see you. Where I thought it is over, where I cannot continue, where I cannot de deal with it with my strength any longer, let me see you. Where I have gone to the end point, God, reveal yourself. Reveal who you are. Reveal yourself upon my life. Prayer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, reveal yourself. Lord, reveal yourself. Everywhere that I thought it is finished, Lord. Lord, reveal yourself, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, reveal yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, reveal yourself, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, reveal yourself, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, reveal yourself. Everywhere that I thought it is finished, everywhere that I thought it is finished, everywhere that I thought it is finished, Lord, begin to show yourself, God. Lord, manifest yourself, God. Manifest your power, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, manifest your power, God. In the name of Jesus, when we thought, when made power, made men strength is finished. Lord, let your power manifest. Let your strength come forth, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, show yourself strong, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let us pray that God, I 
commit this week into your hands. I want to see you. I just want to see you this week. Our children pray that God, let your hand be upon me. Give me grace in knowledge. Children, just pray that God, let your hand be upon me. Let your hand be upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus, this week of God, let your hand come upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your hand come upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your hand come upon me. Iragado Janda Yadi, le peke tere tere, le ragado Janda Yadi. Lord, let your hand follow me, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. In the name of Jesus, this week of God. This week of God, it is blessed to God. It is blessed to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, be ahead of me. Be in front of me. Direct me, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Direct me, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the glory. We exalt your holy name, Lord. We have prayed. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father, King of Glory. We want to appreciate you this morning because you are always faithful. Because you are always kind. Because you prove yourself again this morning, may your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, you are the God of the north, you are the God of the south, you are the God of the east, and you are the God of the west. Yes. Oh Lord, our dear Heavenly Father, we pray today that God, where we have reached the head, Father, we want you to continue and start with us in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. God Almighty, we also pray today that God wants to see you. Yes, we want more of you yes, in every area of our life, oh Lord. We want more of you. Father, let us see more of you in Amen. the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, mightily in this ministry, oh Lord, Father, I want to see more of your Amen. glory. We want to see more of your power. Amen. We want to see more of your anointing. Amen. So shall it be in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Thank you King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Good morning, church. Bible reading will be taken from Psalm 57, verse 1 to 10. Please open your Bible reading. I'll do it. Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the day until the disaster has passed. Verse 2. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicated me. Verse 3. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hostile pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. Verse 4. I am in the midst of lions. I am focused to dwell among the venomous beasts. Men whose teeth and spears and arrows, whose tongues and sh sharp swords. Verse 5. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Verse 6. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they are fallen into it themselves. Verse 7. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Verse 8. Awake my soul, awake, harp and learn. I will awaken the dawn. Verse 9. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of your of you among the people. Verse 10. For great is your love. Reaching to the heavens, your faithfulness reaches to the sky. If I sound this movie, it will have sounded better. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. You know, sometimes it's good to have an assistant. So you stay here. Yeah? Stay here. 
Hey, come here. Stay here. You are going to be the assistant. You see how it is to stand here till the end of the service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What are we call this morning? Let's shout hallelujah. Ah, oh, yes. It's only Emmanuel that, has, that is lively this morning. Praise God. Glory to God in the highest. What a wonderful time in God's praise. How many of you have been blessed so far? The prayer, the Bible study, the uh, song section. I want to thank God uh, for what He is doing in our lives. And um, before we go, let me just quickly say uh, thank you to everyone once again. Uh, for those that um, um, took our time, even for those that wanted to send a message early in the morning, I probably forgot, and they were sending it later in the morning. Thank you. And for those that sent around 4 a.m., my brother, thank you very much. God bless you. And for those that uh, didn't send, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not that kind of person that will take it against you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And before we go this morning, Shall we turn our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter number 13? Wow. Hallelujah. What a glorious God. What a glorious God. Genesis chapter number 13. Shall we your pen? Please write. Because I'm going to be a little bit fast this morning. Genesis chapter number 13. I'll read from verse 7 to 11. Genesis 13, 7 to 11. The Bible says, And there was a strife between the earthmen of Abram's cattle and the earthmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. And between my artsmen and thy artsmen. For we be brethren. Is not the old land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lord lift up his eyes. And beheld all the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest into Zohar. Verse 11, the last verse. The Lord chose him, all the plains of Jordan, and Lord journeyed east. And they separated themselves, the one from the other. Father, we bless you, Lord, this morning. I want to give you praise. I want to exalt your holy name. We thank you for all that you have helped us. We ask, oh God, that you open our hearts this morning. We ask, oh God, that we will journey with you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that this word will open our heart this morning. And it will be recipient to your word. We will come rejoicing. And to victory in Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. The title this morning is what I call Follow El Elyon to Victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Follow El Elyon to Victory. That's the title this morning for those that are writing. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're going to be looking at the story of Lord's. The story of Lot. Most of us will know that story a lot. Abraham and Lot. Lot happens to be the son of Abraham's brother. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Follow El Elyon to victory. By the grace of God this month, God has helped us to understand that El Elyon, the God Almighty, that is his name. And if we say you should follow the El Elyon, that means we are asking you that there is a victory ahead. There is a success ahead. There is an end point ahead of you. And the only person that can lead you through is the El Elyon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
the only person that can lead you to your house. In fact, I, I only say, just like David says, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. This morning, God has proven himself once again. From the Sunday school, even though, yes, I had time to look at the Sunday school for the first time in a long time. Praise God. The prayer that our sister laid this morning, he said, he prayed a prayer for those that pray. Say, even though the place where we have stopped, God should start from there. That means at the first instance, you don't even have the strength of your own. When you think you have gotten to, God is saying, that is not even the starting point. That is not even a place where you should be boast of. Praise God. And our sister prayed and said, God should take over. Praise the Lord. You know, so many times in our life, we'll face so many challenges, so many problems, so many issues of life in our academics, in our studies, in our lives, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our workplace. And you thought it is your power that has gotten you thus far. And that place you are, you are still struggling. There is somebody that can lead you to victory. Praise the Lord. There is somebody that can lead you to what? Victory. The Bible says at the point the arts men of Abraham and the arts men of Lot, they were fighting. They were quarreling. They were saying, no, these are mine. Oh no, these are mine. My own is fat. My own is not big. My own is big. My own is not small. They became enemies. Even their own leaders, Abraham and Lot, they were not fighting. They were not quarreling. Praise the Lord. That's not where I'm going. The Bible says Abraham said to Lord, so that there will not be quarrel between us, we are brethren. Then look ahead of you. This is a plain. This is a grand land filled with mix and honey. Land that is fertile. Choose wherever you want to go and I will go to the other side. Praise the Lord. Choose where you want to go. I will go the other side. Abraham was liberal enough to let his brother choose. Praise the Lord. But the Bible says, little did Lot know that he shouldn't have chosen himself. He should have called on the God that called Abraham. However, let's not forget, Lot himself believed in God. Praise the Lord. He believed in God. That tells us even as a child of God, we know we are born again. We know we are filled with the power of God. We know we are filled with, with God's spirit. We know God speaks to us. But sometimes, when we need that God the most, that's when we choose for ourselves. Praise the Lord. We know that God can lead us. We know God is our strength. We know God is all enough for us. We know He's God Almighty. Instead of you to lean on that God, that is when you know that you have sense. You start to choose for yourself. Praise the Lord. And guess what? The end of that leads to error. The moment you begin to choose for yourself, the moment you begin to walk that journey alone, the moment you have forgotten that there is God Almighty, the one that sees the hand from the beginning, that is when you begin to make errors. Oh, Lord, thought, oh, he has chosen the big land, the wonderful land. He thought by the time he gets to that land, the other plane of the east is cattle. Everything will multiply. He thought riches a hard is the moment he chose the east, he never knew that there is a God Almighty that he should have relied on. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. A few weeks ago, we talked about El Elyon, which is, which is the name we are focusing on, and the description of God Himself. And it's a description that God gave Moses in the burning bush in Exodus chapter number 3, verse 14. In Genesis chapter number 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God, the El Elyon, created the heaven and earth. We talked about that a few weeks ago. God created the heaven and earth. Praise God. The 99 years old Abraham that is childless didn't think it was right for him to go in with the sleeve. But what did the man do? He relied on the God Almighty to walk with him through to victory. Even though, don't let me bore you with the story of how his wife told him, go in with Agar. And that's what most of the time we do. Praise 
God. Praise the living Jesus. That's what most of the time we do. A 99 years old man thought, okay, it doesn't matter. I will wait on the God Almighty. And that man, that God showed up, gave him the child, walking in to the victory. Hallelujah. So who are you going to walk with this morning? Who are you going to walk with this morning? In Genesis chapter number 17, 1 to 2. Genesis 17, 1 to 2. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord Yahweh appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. How many of you have been praying with that name this week? Have you prayed and look at the situations in your life and say, nobody can save me except God. Have you looked through in this morning and said, nobody can take me out of this pit except God. Nobody can multiply my income except God. Nobody can give me the job I want except God. That's what Lord didn't see. That's what he didn't see. Praise the Lord. Bible says, Say, God Almighty, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant before or between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. Somebody say exceedingly. Oh, somebody say exceedingly. The God Almighty said to Abraham, if you can walk with me, I will bless you. I will multiply you. That is what it takes to walk with God. That is what it takes to walk with the Almighty to victory. All you need, God says, walk before me. Walk with me. Just go. I will lead you. Just go. I will lead you. Just choose. I will choose for you. Don't tell me what to do. I know what to do. A very popular man of God in Nigeria. You see, sometimes as we progress in this Christian race, we begin to mature. Yes, I am not pulling anyone down that says, God, I want this. God, I want this. God, this is what you must do. God, this is what you... Yes, it is good. And so, most of the time, God does that. But as you mature in the law, a very popular man of God says, you don't tell God that again. What do you tell God? You say, God, let your will be done in my life. As you mature in the law, because it is he that sees the hand. So by the time you are telling God, God, that plane in the east, that's where I want to go. That's okay, okay, is that where I want to go? Okay, that sounds fine. Just go. But Abraham didn't do that. Hallelujah. Because he knew until he walks with God, the victory will not be sure. Praise the Lord. Until he decides to go through to what God is going or where God is going, the victory will not be sure. But Lord didn't see that. And we have to and one people can use an example. Praise the Lord. Even our Father, Lord Jesus. That's, I want you to have that mindset from now. He didn't tell God. Even though he tried to tell God and said, God, please take this cup away from me. How many of you remember that? But guess what Jesus said? Not my will, but yours be done. Praise the Lord. As you mature in the Lord, as you grow in the Lord every single day, you will not tell God what you want him to do. You will tell God that he should do what he wants to do in your life. That is when victory can happen in your life. That is when success can happen in your life. That is when victory can come to whatever you want. That is when God can lift you up when you are walking. Even when you walk through the shadow of the valley of death, what did David say? He said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Why? Because he's not thinking of himself anymore. When we read in our Bible reading this morning, Psalm 57, that was when David ran away from Saul. He was in the cave of Adilam. The Bible says, even when I was in there, I will call on you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God in the eyes. Let's quickly see that. Psalm 57. Praise God. Look at what David says. He said, I will cry, verse number 2, unto God most high. Unto God that performed all things for me. Unto who? God. The one that can lead somebody to victory. The person that was running for Saul. That thought if this man catches me, I am gone. I am dead. 
And then he ran into the cave. And the Bible says in verse number two, he said, I will cry. Why did he cry? Why didn't he just say, okay, I'm not running again. I have killed lion. I have killed that. Why did he not say that? Why did he have to write and then cry unto God? And he said something so spectacular. He said, unto God that performance all things for me. Do you know what it means for God to perform? I'm not saying God acting. That is God bringing to pass. Perform, bringing to pass what concerns me. And I pray for somebody this morning, even as you go in this week and you have decided to walk with the head and young, the God Almighty, it will perform that which concerns you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Lot was a believer in God, yet at some point in his walk with God, Lot stopped trusting the most high God. So many of us, that's what we do. We trust God, yes. We believe God, yes. Is he the son of God? Yes. Did he die for me? Yes. Thank God this morning, a little pastor talks about Job. Devil was walking to and fro, seeking for whom to devour. And God said, Have you considered my servant Job? And he said, Because you have built a hedge of fire around him. Hallelujah. The God that performs that which concerns his children will perform that which concerns you in the name of Jesus. But there is something I want you to go over this morning as we go. There is something in the life of Lord's. In that story, in Genesis chapter number 17, it is called idolatry. What do I call it? Idolatry. Do you know that it is the idolatry in the behavior of Lot that destroyed him? Lot's idolatry is seen in his behavior. In the previous verse, in Genesis chapter number 13, write that down, Genesis chapter 13, verse 7 to 11. The Bible says there was a strife between the axmen and Abraham's cattle. In the axmen of Lord's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzan dwelt there in the land. Rife, strife rather, strife. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in verse 11, Genesis 13, 11. The Lord chose in all the plain. Look at that. All the plain. All the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Notice something. Abraham and Lot were journeying together. He knew that God was with Abraham. You knew God was working in Abraham. You yourself you even trusted God. And you decide to walk away. Praise the Lord. I want you to begin to see how we have decided to walk with God, and at some point we walked away. We walk with God from the start of our life. This morning you woke up trusting God, prayed. You know, you see, it baffles me how so many folks love God so much pray so much, dwell in God's presence so much, and even in their behavior, they act so carnally. I don't get it. Praise the Lord. Even Jesus said, and if you want to be hot, be hot. If you want to be cold, be cold. Because I hate lukewarmness. I don't like it. If you want to be for me, be for me. If you are not for me, go. No problem. Thank God, our lady pastor said this morning, he said, you have been given the choice. God will never force anything. He will never force you to walk with him by force to victory. Praise the Lord. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? God will never force you to walk with him to victory. Ask me, how did I know? The Bible says when Jesus was walking on the sea, Peter saw him and said, Master, if that was you, bid me to come that I may walk on the water. And he was walking, really. It was working. It was working. It was working. But the moment Jesus did not help his faith to
to stand and to keep walking on the on the water. But the moment he decided to shiver, in the moment he began to doubt that so I might be walking on the water, he began to sink. That was when God, Jesus, stretched out his hand to lift him up. So Jesus will never force you. God will never force you and say, Yes, I am I am the victory. I am the one that will lead you to where you are supposed to go. So you must walk with me by force. He will never do that. Praise the Lord. You know why? Because he's a loving God. We said that this morning. That's part of the character of God, of the Father. He will never force you. If he keeps forcing you, you will be the one to say, God is wicked. He didn't allow you to have your will or your wish. Am I right? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. If he gives you choice, now God has given us options. Say, okay, choose whatever you want to do. We are the same ones saying, why would God say, eh, this one is going to hell. That one is going to heaven. But he has given you choice. Praise the Lord. I pray we will choose the right choice in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we will join you with God Amen. to victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, Lord, to walk east. And guess what? His life will end it because of that. The moment he separated from Abraham. I'm not saying you must walk with Abraham. But I'm only saying, look at that scenario where Lord decided to separate himself from the one that God called. What ended his life? Hallelujah. Glory to God in your eyes. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Genesis chapter 14, verse 22 to 23. Quickly. Genesis 14, 22 to 23. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the Hallelion, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest see I have made Abraham rich. You see, when you know the God you are serving, you don't need to take from anybody, you don't need to beg anybody, because God Himself will be your provider. Abraham said, I will not take anything from you so that you will not tell me later on in the future that you have blessed me. Because Abraham knew the promises that God has made with him. Remember what we read? He said, God said to him, just walk with me and I will make a covenant with you. And that is what it means to have a victory when you walk with God. God begins to make covenant with you. God begins to say, you are my friend. God begins to reveal himself to you. God begins to show you the hidden secrets, the hidden wealth, the wealth of the Gentiles. God begins to show them to you. Where others are struggling, where others are lamenting, where others are shouting, because you are walking with God, God has made covenant with you, God has made promises with you, He begins to show you, open your eyes to see the things you are supposed to do. And that's how your victory comes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is how your victory comes. If you fail to walk with God, just like Lot left Abraham, and you know what happened to his life, the same thing is going to happen. It's as simple as that. Praise the Lord. This is the last Sunday in the month of June. Am I right? Praise God. We have talked about this God. We have talked about him. Talked about him for the past three Sundays. So I challenge you, church, in whatever situation you are right now, the only person that can hold your hand and walk with you, and then you can see the victory ahead of you, is the Elion. Praise the Lord. It's the God Almighty. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. The Bible says, No man can serve two masters, for either he hates the world and loves the other, or else he will hold to the world and despite to the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Choose. When we said this morning that God has given us choice, choose what you want for yourself. Do you want that victory? Do you want God to hold your hand and walk with you to victory? Or you want just yourself and the money and the wealth of course, there is nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is nothing wrong with it. There is a God that men are serving. That is not the Hallelujah. That's idolatry. 
Idolatry can come in any form. Praise the Lord. It can come in any form. It can come in form of money. And Jesus called it mammon. Jesus called it mammon. Praise the Lord. Jesus called it mammon. In John chapter 8 verse 56. The Bible says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. I was glad. I was glad. But that was when Jesus was declaring to the Pharisees that your father walked with me. The father rejoiced to see me. How did Abraham saw God? Because he was walking with God. And his life ended up with blessings, with promises of God. With God's increase, with God's covenant. And Jesus was making reference to that in John chapter 8 verse 56 to the Pharisees. And said, look, you guys, I am here today. Instead of you to hold my hand and begin to walk with me. So that we can get to the end line together. You are here misbehaving. But your father Abraham, he saw, he rejoiced with me in those days. And he was glad. Praise the Lord. We know the story in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 3. The Bible talks about the faith that Abraham had. He said, for, his, for this Mekiza, the king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings. Do you see that? You remember that place that we read? That Abraham said to that king, he said, I will not collect anything so that you don't say I am blessed with you. That was when Abraham went to war and he got all the spoils. And the Bible says he met with God and he get got this gift and gave a tenth of it to uh, Melchizedek. Praise the Lord. Because he was blessed. Because he was blessed. That Melchizedek, king of Salem, blessed Abraham. That was God blessing Abraham. Why? Because he decided to walk with God. He decided to stick with God. Not like Lot. That because of idolatry, because of uh, the, the fictitious things, the things of the world, the plain of Jordan to the east, he walked that way and avoided walking with the one that God called, with the one that held the connection with God. Praise the Lord. Church, I want to advise us this morning as we go, that this morning, please walk with God. This week, walk with God. In fact, for the rest of the year, walk with God. In fact, for the rest of your life, walk with God. Because that is when your victory can come. Hallelujah. Let's bow down and I'm going to pray. I say, Lord, I surrender to you this month. I will walk with you. May I not turn my back from you. May I not turn away from you. I will begin to walk with you from now on. So that my victory is sure. My victory is sure. My victory is sure. In every circumstances of life. In every circumstances of life. In every periods of life, in every situation I, I fall in, I'm in right now. Lord, I choose to work with you. Lord, I choose to work with you. Lord, I choose to work with you so that my victory can come. So that my victory can come in the name of Jesus. I will not depart from you just like Lord departed from Abraham. I will not depart from you. Lord, I want to work with you. I want to hold your hands tight. I want to hold your hands tight. You are the El Elyon. You are the God Almighty. The one who created the heaven and the earth. The one who knows the end from the beginning. The one who is the beginning, the middle and the end. The one who was, the one who is. The one who is to come. Lord, I declare today. Lord, I will not turn my back from you. I will not turn away from you. I will not turn away from you. Or rather, I will walk with you. I will walk with you. In the name of Jesus. And my victory will come. And my victory will come. And my victory will come. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. We exalt your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's begin to pray and tell God and say, Lord, my week is blessed. My week is blessed. We're going to pray and talk to God. I say, My week is blessed this morning. My week is blessed, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. My week is blessed, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. My week is blessed, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless you, Almighty God. Our week is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying. Amen. 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 Our announcement for today will be, we meet every Sunday by 10 a.m. Please invite your friends and family. Our Bible study comes up every Wednesday at 6 
30 p.m. Please join us online. We also meet every sun every Sunday night night for our midnight of fire and power at 11:55 p.m. Every other announcement will be passed on by our pastor. Thank you and have a wonderful week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for the announcement. God bless you. Uh, please feel free to join us online as you said. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a wonderful time in God's presence. How many of you have been blessed this morning? How many of you have been blessed? Clap your hands for the Lord. Clap your hands for the Lord if you have been blessed this morning. Hallelujah. Please, let's continue to work with, together with the El Elyon this week and the rest of the month and the rest of our life so that our victory can come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, like I said earlier, thank you for those that are um, that called, that came on Thursday. God bless you. Um, um, like I said last week, the, the birthday still continues. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, it's my birthday on Thursday and um, um, uh, if you're free, please feel free to join us at home this afternoon uh, after church now. We can go together and then we can have some some nice time together. Woo! Praise the Lord. Uh, so you, you don't need to you don't need to rush home to go and cook. Okay. So the ones the ones you guys did, I appreciate it a lot. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And uh but because I've said it last week, so it has to happen this week again. God bless you. Um, please feel free to call our brethren that are not here. Call them, check on them, and uh, the Lord will bless you as you do that in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Without wasting our time, uh, let's, let's uh, pray. I want us to pray for our, our sister. Uh, let's just pray for her, even as she goes to school, that the Lord will bless her. Her and I, anytime she steps to school, that the Lord will bless her and give her knowledge, understanding. Let's bow our eyes and begin to pray for her sister and say, Lord, we bless her. We pray for her that you grant her wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Even as she goes to school, we pray for her that you bless her, oh God, with wisdom, knowledge, favor, 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 favor would be our portion in the name of Jesus. Favor would be our portion in the name of Jesus. Men, women, boy, young, old. We bless you, we favor you in the mighty name of Jesus. We favor you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray the hand of God will come upon you. You will come back again and meet us, even in good health. And you will be in good health also. And your soul will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's stand to our feet as we pray and go. Father, we bless you once again. We give you all the praise. We exalt your holy name. We magnify your name for what you have done. You are a faithful God. You are awesome God. You are the almighty God. You are the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. We lift up our voice to say thank you. We say be exalted Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, you are not saying amen. We exalt you Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, therefore we commit this week into your hands. We ask of God that our mouth will be filled with praise. Oh, you are not saying amen. Our mouth will be filled with praise. In the name of Jesus, we ask of God divine favor, divine favor, divine favor, divine favor, divine favor, divine favor will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Where you have been rejected, you will be remembered in the name of Jesus. You will receive a special call that will make your heart gladness in the name of Jesus. You will receive a special call. They will put smile and laughter into your face in the name of Jesus. I cancel every spirit of error before you this week in the mighty name of Jesus. I cancel every spirit of error, every spirit of failure in your ways this week in the name of Jesus. You are highly faithful. You are lifted up. You are supported in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord Almighty will journey and walk with you even as you go this week. And the end will be for victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We declare this week upon the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. May we say the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever in the church. Say, Amen. Three powerful hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. See you next week.